Right, in this video we'll be taking a look at the Linux distribution Peppermint OS 3. So it's a hybrid web OS. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful there. Right, a web OS being that it's uh, just an operating system that gets you on the internet ASAP and you can just do a few applications on there so like internet browsing, checking your email, even this one comes with a little bit of picture editing and being able to access like Google Docs. And the hybrid part meaning you can still use some of it offline. So taking a look at it in VirtualBox. So the important thing for a web OS is that it should boot up as quickly as possible. You know, certainly a damn sight a lot quicker than the Windows will boot up, for instance. And well this what was that? A few seconds, wasn't it? Okay, taking into account VirtualBox compared to a real world system. Well, in some cases a real world system can be slightly quicker than VirtualBox, particularly if you're using a solid state disk. But for rotational hard drive, you're probably looking at maybe like five, at worst, ten seconds more. Ten seconds if you've got a pretty slow machine. One of the good features with this system, they've made it a bit more user friendly. You notice there that the applications are called by what they do rather than the silly names we have for them. So that makes it a bit simpler if you're, well, if you don't know what all the applications do, you just think, oh, I want a text editor. You don't need to know it's called gedit, it just it's a text editor. Now the web applications on here are made more for Google account holders. Not really an issue for me, I do have a Google account and well, actually most of my rev life revolves around that. Uh, but I suppose for anyone who doesn't have one that's uh, a bit of a disadvantage there. <laughs> but let's take a more in-depth look at the system. I was using a dark wallpaper theme for the intro but the default wallpaper is this bright white one. That's teamed with a partially transparent application bar on the bottom. The light grey menus. We'll take a look at the internet applications of this distro. So just starting in Office, Google Office. You can open up any documents you have on your Google Drive. So let's just open this one for instance. Now I don't know why it's coming up with this. Um, I did all the updates earlier and it didn't actually, it didn't update Chromium. Never mind, it works though. Another one, Google Calendar, and it's come up with my appointments on here. Uh, that was when my new nephew was born, so another birthday to remember. And that's why it's in my calendar, because I'll never remember it. And there you are, I got the web browser. So all applications on here are opening pretty damn quick, so it's a nice quick and responsive system. This would ideally suit a dual booter, and I want to use that, say, Windows for gaming, but if they want an alternative just to go on the internet, this is an ideal distro for that. It's quick to boot, it gets you online, and that's really what you need. There's another of the online applications. You've got the editing in pixlr.com. It's not one I've really used before, but I have heard of it. Let's take a look at the rest of the applications it comes with. So in your accessories, just the basic load of accessories you'd expect to see. So the calculator there is stored locally. So that's more the hybrid part of the OS. And the graphics, we've got the document viewer, the pixelate editor as we've just seen, and we've got a simple scan for scanning documents. Under internet we've got a BitTorrent client, the Chromium web browser, Dropbox, ICE, desktop integration for web apps. I'll just show you that one. So you can create new shortcuts for your favorite websites. So also under internet we've got the an IRC client, and we've got links to Peppermint User Guide and their forums. Under Office, we've just seen most of that. The email provider on here is Gmail, and that takes you directly into Gmail. Under Sound, the media player is GNOME M player, and the music player, I'm sorry, I just cannot pronounce that one. <laughs> I don't know. Now, if you're trying to play music or videos on here, they won't work by default. You've got to go and install the restricted extras. Now, to do that, well, that comes neatly onto the next menu. Under the system tools, you've got software manager. There are a few Mint programs included in a Lubuntu-based distro. And incidentally, it's based on Lubuntu 12.04. It would be Lubuntu restricted extras. There we go. So you can install that and then you'll be able to play music and video files. If you're playing videos online through Flash Player, then that will work by default because Flash Player is pre-installed. 
Take a look at the task manager to see how much memory is being used, and you'll see that it is pretty low. It's only 220 meg of RAM in use. The CPU usage is well, pretty well nothing. It's like suitable for older systems. If your computer can run Windows XP, then you can run this distribution. You... Right, here's what I thought of Peppermint OS 3. So easy to use. Yep, certainly was. Ease of installation. <laughs> right, it had a GUI installer, so normally I would just give it five points here. But they'd given it a black writing on a black background, so about half of it was illegible. Bit annoying there, so you had to highlight things, and you could get through it. So styling, it's fine, but nothing that special. Boot up speed, yep, certainly pretty quick. And responsiveness, again, certainly pretty quick there. Number of bugs, uh, I just found a couple of minor bugs in some of the pre-installed applications, but nothing that bad, really. Uh, the selection of pre-installed apps, uh, it's aimed more at Google account holders, so I've only given it four out of five here. It's not a problem if you're a Google account holder, but if you don't use it, then yeah. Number of applications available. Uh, they've added a couple of repositories, but not enough to give it a higher score. Actually, if it comes with both the 32 and 64-bit versions. So the good points. Yeah, it's a good operating system to use as a dual booter with, say, something like Windows, so you can get on the internet nice and fast and it's light enough to be used on older systems. The bad points, well, I noticed there was a Duff repository for Chromium and it was not allowing it to be updated. So at the moment it's about four versions behind, I think it was, so yeah, not good. But overall I've given this distribution 82%, so that's still a very good score. Thanks for watching, see you later.